your passion really I, I came through and there's like one chapter toward the end um if you recall like there's a kind of a section where someone's on trial it, 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 magnus and yeah. uh and there's a lot of characters voices happening at once and the way that you were flipping between them and the amount of mo emotion and passion that you were putting into it i, I actually got a little teary-eyed I, I was like oh wow like th this is good this is like not just like my writing anymore this this is like what graham's adding to it so i i really enjoyed it you present a false dilemma once we are done with you and this band of fools we will take our fight to the Lyrians themselves. Will that involve the slaughter of more innocents? They were complicit in this evil as well, screamed the warlord. The echoes of his words rattled around the chamber, piercing the audience's ears. The Empire's villagers sit by as their soldiers persecute my people. They are just as guilty, Magnus stated calmly. And that reasoning was uttered by many war criminals before they committed terrible atrocities of their own. Michael Moray, where are you? I'm in Bakersfield, California right now. So where's Bakersfield in relation to Los Angeles and San Francisco? So basically it's in between both of them, about two hours north of Los Angeles and about four and a half hours away uh, south of San Francisco. Is it near the coast? It's in what we call the Central Valley. Um, so it's the breadbasket of California. There's a lot of agriculture here. Okay. Well, so probably the closest I've been, I drove from San Francisco to LA down the Pacific Highway once. Uh, but I, I also visited Fresno. Do either of those places, are they close? Uh, Fresno is fairly close. It's about two hours south of Fresno. Fresno is kind of a sister city of Bakersfield. It's two hours south. You see, that's the difference between the USA and Britain. You see, we wouldn't think <laughs> two hours here, you know, that, that puts you it really in. From where I am, I'm uh, 40 miles north of London. If I was mm. to drive two hours south, I'd be on the south coast, you know, and we <laughs> just shows you, we're, we're dealing yeah. with, with vast distances there. So the sister city is two hours away. Yeah. Yeah, no, California is, is very spread out. To get from one end to the other, we're talking 10 to 15 hours. So it, it's pretty yeah. long. Yeah. And did you grow up there in, in ba say it was Bakersfield, if I said that right? That's yeah. right. Um, I, I was born in the Bay Area, actually. But um, early on, from the age of two, I've lived on and off in Bakersfield. Um, I have family that are in the oil industry. And so there's a lot of oil and gas in uh, the Central Valley in Bakersfield. So they moved for that reason. And then yeah. I've kind of moved uh, for various uh, schooling and jobs and like that stuff like that throughout the coast. But um, currently I'm, I'm back in Bakersfield now. Because you're an attorney. That's right. I am. So what kind of attorney are you? Do you do you defend do you defend people who are accused of things or is it something different? I mean, I'm just getting this from TV, you know. Yeah. Our, our view of attorneys is what, what, what's your what's your day to day work? I'm, I'm a prosecutor day to day. So I, uh, okay. I actually go and prosecute criminals. Yes. Right. So you, uh, you, you've got to, you've got to get them sent down. You've got to get them in jail. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yeah. So a little bit of the law and order, um, stuff that you see on television is, is yeah. kind of what I do. Wow. And has that influenced your writing? The, I mean, the, cause you're gonna come across so many stories. Uh, with the people you have to prosecute, I would have guessed. Does that help with, with when you're coming up for ideas for writing? You know, I, I think a little bit um, in the sense of when you do any sort of trial work as an attorney, um, you have to balance um, your witnesses, um, which is kind of like a cast of characters in a book. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you have to come up with a compelling theme or a, or a story to go and tell about your case. Um, and, and so that kind of influences your writing in a way too. You kind of think about things in a similar way. Um, how do you go and uh, portray this, this version of the facts that you're trying to tell in a particular way? And so in that sense, I think it does go and influence my writing. Yeah. Yeah. It'd help out. It would, it would help out immensely. I would have thought when you're trying to balance out the characters, just like balancing out the witnesses, I never even <laughs> thought about it like that. So what kind of stuff w were you inspired by Were you reading as a kid? Well, you know, I mean, I, I've always just read lots of the, the classics, obviously. Um, you know, I think that a big influence in um, the books that I've written recently, there are uh, primarily, you know, The Hobbit, uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy, um, stuff yeah. like that. 
you know, as well as there's a, a lot of a psychological bent to some of my works and uh, Ender's Game, which is a sci-fi novel, actually influenced me a lot on that standpoint because a lot of it is about um, the main character Ender's headspace, where he's at um, while he's being crafted to be this soldier of the future. And then um, 1984 is my personal favorite book. And I try to kind of capture a lot of that uh, flavor, the kind of paranoia, uh, the government conspiracy and control of people through um, through my own work. So 1984 is always, and George, well, George Orwell in general, is kind of a, a big influence in my writing as well. I never thought about that when I was reading The Ashen Prophecy, but I'm seeing it now. It all makes it all makes perfect sense, the 1984 thing and the way that uh, governments manipulate the population and there's all that going on in there. It, it is a right. great book. So when did you start writing? So I've been writing um, since I was a little kid. In fact, my first novel that I wrote and um, published, I started writing it when I was in high school, actually. And um, I just did it in my free time. I set it aside for a couple of years when I was in college and uh, kind of had writer's block on how to go and proceed with it. But then uh, when I went to law school, I kind of needed a creative outlet because law school was just very intense and a lot of reading, but not particularly interesting materials, very dry stuff. And uh, so what I did was I came back to it in my free time in between studies and I finished up writing. And then I kind of went back to the first half that I had written and polished it up because a lot of it had changed my own feelings on life and writing had changed. And uh, I, I went and published that when I was in law school. So that was about like six or seven years ago. And then um, my current, the, the current book um, that you recorded for, Graham, uh, was written about two years ago. Okay, right, I see. And you're also a filmmaker. That's right, I am. Um, so I go and make short films with friends. Um, and I've been doing that since I was in grade school. We took a, you know, our parents' camcorder and we went around uh, the countryside and started filming things. And Throughout the years, um, you know, we have a, a decent group of friends. We use local theater actors as well. And we've kind of built up like a small community of um, people to go and draw upon for our short films. And we've premiered them at uh, theaters, local theaters in town. And right. we're getting bigger and bigger with each one. So it, it, um, like when I say short films, they're about 50 minutes to an hour each now. So they're getting more uh, standard theatrical length right now. And um, we want to go and try to introduce some of those at a short film festival sometime. Wow. And you're also a, a film critic online. The, the podcast that you do about movies, it's called Real Perspective? That's right. Um, so I go and um, along with my co-host, we talk about usually recent, uh, recently released movies. Due to the pandemic, we started covering some television shows because there weren't as many theatrical releases. And we kind of just break down, uh, you know, our thoughts on it. Uh, we call it real perspective because we're trying to talk about um, maybe some of our own biases or um, impressions of uh, the world and it kind of relate it to the films. And so um, that's kind of a, another gig that I'm involved with. And it, all of this stuff kind of influences my own work. I try to make my own writing somewhat cinematic as well, I think. As yeah, definitely. It. it definitely is. Oh, it's just on epic proportions. Um, well, the pod, I do a weekly show on the radio in the UK uh, called The Pod 20, which is a countdown of the top 20 podcasts in the world. And I get to interview podcasters, so I'd love to have you on. So if you've got some time, we'll set that up and I'll get you on as a guest. Or you can even get uh, your co-host on with you as well. I don't know. if you Just to get some uh, awareness for the podcast in the UK, it might help you out. You never know because the show's on the air. I mean, it's online as well, but it's on the radio. It's on in, in London and Manchester and Glasgow. So it's got quite a big reach. So you might want to... Uh, you, you might want to take me up on that because I think that'll be fun to talk to you about your podcast and talk about movies. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, let's I do love it. it. Okay, we'll set that up. All right, well, let's let's talk about what we're here for, is to talk about right. the Ashen Prophecy, the book. Um, I was honored to be selected as the narrator, and it is just a great read. Where did the inspiration for it come from? And I, there's got to be many many strands we've we've talked generally about the kind of things that inspire you and and there's 1984 in it but mm -hmm. what why did you because it starts off there's that there's a country that they're the, the, the regulars and um mm -hmm. i don't know if you noticed i made them english and i made the, <laughs> and i made the lyrian scottish so i did could, i did you did notice that i did i, I noticed it. it was it was well played i liked it 
I, well, I needed some way to differentiate them as well. And then when yeah. we got into the mountains, those people were more like Northeast England. They were a bit more like Geordies, as we as we call them here. I needed some mm -hmm. way of... of to, and the great thing about having the Scots is there's a particular villain who you'll know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't get too much yes. about it, but there's a, there's a villain who is a Lyrian. And uh, when I was working for a radio station many years ago, there was a, a boss I had uh, who was just like that. And <laughs> he was also Scottish. So mm -hmm. that character, I do him. I do an oh. that, that character is an impression of a real guy who I hate, yeah. who is so slimy. <laughs> and this guy is just like him. And I thought, well, I've got to do him. I've got to the, do There, there was something guy. that felt very real about that performance. <laughs> I, I noticed. <laughs> oh, it's payback time, yeah. Uh, it's not the first time I've used him as a villain in an audio book, but I think it was one of the most satisfying because there's a lot of him, you know? And yes, yes. Yeah, I don't want to say what happens to him because that would spoil it if anybody wants to get the book. But but basically, right. where did the idea come from this for these... these you've created these countries and this world, mm -hmm. and then there's the story of what happens. So is there anything you can pinpoint for where this came from, the idea for this? Well, you know, um, a lot of my writing is actually influenced by some of the things that um, the movies that I watch and things that I criticize in my own film criticism or in my own writing. So, for example, I think that the current state of Hollywood uh, is not exactly in the, in the best place when it comes to storytelling. And so when I go and see particular movies, they might go and incense me quite a bit and then I think about, well, I like maybe the theme that they're going for or this idea or the, the, the overall skeleton of the plot that they have, but I didn't think it was very well done or I didn't think it was very well fleshed out. And so I kind of write some of my own novels and stories as ways of addressing those other things, those other works. Um, for example, a lot of this book was influenced by, I don't know if you've seen any of the uh, recent star wars tr sequel trilogy um yeah prequel movies. i don't know what the hell they are i've lost yeah. track of <laughs> where they fit in the story yeah right like a couple of those really uh got me going in terms of oh like there's something good there but it just wasn't well executed and so some of it was actually written as a response of um some of the themes in those movies uh, there's a lot of like dealing with your own failure um but also how to live with it and still maintain you know your own inner heroism and discovering it and nurturing it for the future. Um, so that was certainly an element of it. And then I, I have a big love of history. I love Roman history. So um, Lyrium, for example, is, is very much influenced by ancient Rome going from the Republic to an imp imperial stage. Uh, that's where the idea of two consuls comes from. And then, yeah. you know, an imperator who kind of becomes a dictator. So, um, and then obviously you're dealing with uh, tribes in the North, which is kind of like the Germanic tribes and the French tribes um, in the North. But then you know, um, Regulus is kind of more this medieval Europe slash, you know, medieval Britain kind of setting. And yeah. so um, the, what you found um, in your own character voices and in the setting really worked well in terms of differentiating those groups of people. Great. I really enjoyed doing it. And you've got magic in there as well, but you've yeah. also got a, a basic technology and a mm. real conflict between the two. I loved that because, you know, if you don't, if you don't understand technology, technology is magic too. You know what right. I mean? They're, they're, yeah, they're in different. a different way. Yeah. And you played with all that. It was really, really, really well done. And I, I really enjoyed that with the, you know, this, this, uh, terracite, this uh, material that they find that can do interesting things. And then the, the mages who are like a subgroup, aren't they? And they're persecuted and mm -hmm. th there's all that going on too. So it's very, it gets, it gets very political, but it, it, it has a lot to say. It's just, it's just wonderful. And, oh, and the you. individual characters like, like the main guy, Magnus, Magnus, um, where does he come from then? Did you have a particular actor in mind or, or anything from a movie to put in there? You know, it's funny you mentioned that because somebody asked me that recently. Um, and I, I don't know if I can distill him down into one person or actor in particular. Uh, I mean, there's been times where I thought like, I don't know, a Brad Pitt or something like that. Um, but there's, there's, other, there's other people who come to mind. He's kind of just an amalgamation of um, 
He's a little bit Luke Skywalkery in some ways. Um, yeah, he, he's kind of he's kind of like an older, wizened um, version of him, but one that, like, for example, later Star Wars movies didn't uh, didn't do, treat him very well, in my opinion. And so there's a little bit of that um, in him as well. So there's there's different elements of different people, um, but I wouldn't say there's actually one person I ever had in mind to go and play him. Actually, okay. Um, well, I, yeah. I played him as a Yorkshireman, so 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 my version of him is is. I, I would say, from an actor point of view, maybe a Sean Bean was was probably mm. as as close as he was like that. To me, he he was like that. You know that you can feel from reading him that there's a deep, deep integrity about the man. Yes, yeah. And so yeah. that had to come across, and you know, there's something genuine and 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 earthy about people from Yorkshire, and so mm -hmm. that's that's why. I chose that and I and, and I went with that. But you've also right there's a lot of depth in there, you know, he's got that backstory and then that interesting dynamic mm. with his wife. And you've That's got right. all that going on and him dealing with his own issues throughout. So I don't want to say he's a flawed hero cuz he's not. He's mm. a proper good hero, but he's got he's had challenges in his life that have shaped his character even though you can tell he was a good guy all along he, right, he wasn't of he didn't have an epiphany at some stage but these things like reinforced that he was he, he needed to do the right thing and i thought he was a magnificent hero of the piece so strong and uh, the kind of guy you'd like to lead you into battle you know what i mean he really was i well, he was a nice exactly guy. Yeah. No, it, it, I'm glad you brought that up because um, I was very much influenced when I was growing up by something Star Trek: The Next Generation, and uh, yeah. Patrick Stewart plays uh, a captain on that. He, yeah, and he's very he's he has a lot of integrity throughout the entire show. He doesn't always choose violence; he tries to find diplomatic solutions, and so that's also what Magnus in these stories tries to do as well. He's trying to go and find maybe a diplomatic approach and then he's he's rebuffed or uh, you know it doesn't always work but he's always trying to use empathy to understand people and get yeah. where they're coming from and, yeah. and you know I, I find that like that deep kind of morality to be very satisfying and then you know when push comes to shove he's willing to go and back up uh, what he believes with you know a sword if he has to yeah and we'll put his life on the line straight exactly. away if he believes mm -hmm. in it strongly enough and he was also a great mentor the 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 uh the young guy I forgot the character's name what's the young oh guy? elam yeah you put him in there and then mm -hmm. he's a mentor to him because you know in the world of blokes we <laughs> need a strong male role model and you mm -hmm. see in society where you know kids who grow up with deadbeat dads and that and right. not good families they're attracted to poor role models in gangs and that becomes their family and the strong male role model in their life and the next minute the kid's off the rails and he's in jail and there's all sorts of trouble so to get right. to get that part I mean, the story is it's got so much to it so to have <laughs> that in there as well to show the mm. importance the, of what young men need um, That's right. to, to develop properly as, as as you know good men and I know that sounds really sexist but you know, women have a, a, a different different challenges, but men, it's going to sound so old-fashioned, have to be men, and they only learn that from men who are good men. Um, I agree with you. And I and I really liked all that about it. It was just uh, it was just terrific, and uh, it's it's long though. I mean, it's over. Is is it over seventeen hours long? The audio book? Yeah, no, I think I think it gets close to nineteen hours. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it, it's, wow. it's it's a read. You, you read a it's lot. One, <laughs> it may even be the. It's one of the longest ones I've done. I know I've done an eighteen. It may be the longest one. I'm not sure. And were you ever tempted when you? I'm not saying there's too long because it's mm -hmm. not. Everything's in there that needs to be in there. But were you ever? Mm -hmm. Did you ever put pressure on yourself to say, well, maybe I could make this shorter? You know, it, th there was a time, um, for example, when I thought about possibly trying to do something other than self-publish, go and find an agent or something like that. I was told, oh, oh they're, they're looking for like 90,000 words or something like that. Which and is about nine hours in goes, an audio book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and this, this is, you know, double that essentially. Um, and, and to me, I felt like to go and hit the themes that I wanted to hit, to make it as epic as I wanted to make it. 
um, and, and to develop the characters the way I wanted to, I felt like it needed to be as long as it was. And yeah. um, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of breaking a story up into two parts and then making you go and buy several parts or, you know, not getting a full character arc. I want you to feel like when you've read a story that you saw the entirety of this character's arc, that you got the entirety of the story and you walk away feeling satisfied for it. Yeah. Yeah. You use the word epic in there. I think you've used it a few times in this chat and, and that is the way to describe it. Some of the battle scenes, some of the, um, the head to head battles as well. Mm. And, and also the magic, uh, throughout of it, it is just, you know, it's in the, the, some of the magic bits are almost enchanting, but some of the mm. some of the battle scenes are quite brutal and and quite yes. real. But uh, no, it is great. And and have you had a book turned into an audio book before? No, this is the first audio book I've done with with you. So it's been okay. uh, an incredible experience. I've really enjoyed it. How did you find it then? Was it was it different to how you'd expected it, or easier, or harder, or because I'd love to get some feedback on on what it's like from your end to to work with me. You know, it's weird because um, when you go and write a story over a period of time, and then you know it's been out published and. Uh, physical form for a while you have these characters voices in your head that that you've come up with as an author and yeah. and then you realize uh, oh someone else has a different interpretation of these characters and, and then i realized oh wait i guess i've been putting like american accents in all these people which <laughs> didn't actually like it, it wasn't actually very good for any of them you know and all of them are just like variations of my voice and um Seeing it through another um, speaker's eyes or, or mouth, I guess, um, was was very enlightening. And um, I, by the by, like you know, a couple of chapters in, I realized, okay, this this is his version of the characters, and and then they overtook my version of the characters, and they became the definitive versions of the characters. And and I found that like incredibly rewarding to go and see, like. Now I have two versions of the book kind of in my head. You know, I've got the one that's that's my my voice, which you know I think is now inferior to the one that you've created, and it was really uh, amazing to go in and have that process happen. It was just great working with you as well. You were very very easy to work with. We only made, I think, was it a, there was a there was a few mistakes I made, but it was really a handful that that you said, "Oh, yeah. change that." It's. Uh, mm -hmm. It was, but it was very easy to we, to read because it was well written, and it tends Thank to you. be that way. That the better written ones are easier to do, because mm -hmm. Thank you. because I find myself absorbed in the world that, mm -hmm. that that they're in, and it was always, you know, I work on a lot of books at once. Right now, I'm working on eight. Uh, oh wow! Simultaneously, so I do a few chapters of you know through my day. I do a few chapters of one, a few chapters of the next one, depending on where the deadlines are. And so I'll do more chapters on the ones with the deadlines looking cl getting closer. Um, but yours is one I really, I re I mean, I the, the, all the ones I've done have been nice, been good experiences. I haven't had a bad experience with one, but uh, yours was one I looked forward to. I was like, okay, oh great, you know. Thanks. I think at the time I was doing a couple of business ones, so there was a totally mm -hmm. different thing. It was like, you know, how to make money at this and yeah. that. <laughs> but yours was a real adventure, so it was the one that was like, oh great, here we go. Let's get yeah. into this. Let's get Magnus going. Let's have Magnus taking no prisoners. <laughs> Let's, you know, I sense get that. <laughs> yeah, it was no, so I, much fun to do. It was great. Your, your, your passion really, I, I came through. And there's like one chapter toward the end. Um, if you recall, like there's a kind of a section where someone's on trial, it, 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 Magnus, and yeah. uh, and there's a lot of characters' voices happening at once. And the way that you were flipping between them and the amount of mo emotion and passion that you were putting into it, I, I actually got a little teary-eyed. I, I was like, oh, wow, like th this is good. This is like not just like my writing anymore. This this is like what Graham's adding to it. So I, I really enjoyed it. Oh, it was so much fun to do. Hey, thanks for choosing me, Michael. No, of um, course, thank you. It's called The Ashen Prophecy. It's available Audible, iTunes, or is it still called iTunes or is it called Apple something or other? Uh, you know, I think, it's, I think it's iTunes is where you can find it, yes. Okay, so it's iTunes. So it is, mm -hmm. uh, it's iTunes, it's on Audible and it's on Amazon. Uh, it'll be in a load of other places as well. If you'd like to get a, a free one with a, th you, you just got to sign up to a 30 day trial at Audible. And in the, that's my email address there. But if you're watching this on YouTube, in the blurb there, there's a link. So you can link straight to where you can uh, get, do, do the, um, the, the trial 
with Audible Trial, and you can download it for free if you mm -hmm. want to do that. So if you want to do that, just just click on that and it'll set you up it, it's it's a link direct to audible there's no there's no middleman or anything going on there go straight to audible and you can get it for free it is the ashen prophecy it's available now it's a cracking listen it's a great i could say it's a great read as well because i read it but it's a great thing to read but if you want to get the audiobook version check that out or get them both and and uh, <laughs> and listen along while you read and and hear the characters come to life as well if you if you want no. to i mean that's always a good way around a good good way to do it, it uh, is. michael thank you so much continued success thank you you as well I, I really appreciate all your hard work on this you did a fantastic job